welcome to the latest episode of Divorce TV. I have an expert interview with Michael from Families Need Fathers, who also take care of mums as well. So make sure you come and listen to that interview. And I've got an, an amazing healing with a yogi who uh, is called Stella. So she will take us out of the show at the end. And a lovely, lovely shared story of, I did a few years ago, and it was another one of those, grabbed it on my iPhone, when someone happened to tell me tell me how they were dealing with a difficult part of their divorce. So I think you'll, particularly the dads will find that one very, very interesting. But right now we're gonna go and head and see what's happening in the news. I'm going to have a little bit of a rant on this one, I'm afraid. So for those of you in California who are you know, used to no fault divorce, you're going to be amazed at what I'm going to be telling you now. So according to the FT advisor, no fault rules will not come into force um, in the UK until autumn 2021, despite the divorce bill having effectively finished its parliamentary journey. The UK Divorce Dissolution and Separation Bill concluded its passage through the House of Commons on June the 17th and is now on track to receiving royal assent. The only hurdle it still faces is for additional amendments to be considered by the House of Lords. And wait to hear what one of these is. One amendment includes extending the minimum legal period for a divorce from the six months which they put in the bill to a year. So what that means is you, you know, you've done the right thing, you've cut a deal with the finances, maybe work with a financial planner, mediators help you work it all through, you're all ready to do your financial, your consent order, and you've, you've got the paperwork, the admin done, and you're at decree, um, decree nice eye stage, though they're going to call it something else once they pass the bill, and you have to wait a year. Don't ask me why. But maybe a clue will be a couple of the quotes I'm going to give you in a minute. It's not yet known when the Lords will consider the amendments put forward by the Commons. So we still don't really know the timelines. But they do still seem to be uh, just a bit too far away for a lot of people who'd really rather not having, be having to blame each other when it comes to divorce. Normally, after a bill receives the royal assent, the, the legislation will either commence immediately or after a certain time if there has been a commencement, or, commencement order set by a government minister. But couples seeking a no-fault divorce under the new legislation will have to wait another year, according to Lord Chancellor Robert Buckland, because he told MPs that the bill's reforms will not come into force on royal assent because time needs to be allowed for careful implementation. How complicated can it be to go, why well, you don't have to say horrible things about each other? But no, apparently that alone is gonna take a year. Fiona Bruce, MP for Congleton said, this bill is a bad bill. It sends out the wrong message at the wrong time. No fault divorce is really state approved unilateral divorce. Ministers like to say that it is all about the divorce process and not about marriage. They are wrong, she says. The removal of fault sends out the signal that marriage can be unilaterally exited with no available recourse for the party who has been left. Oh my goodness, so if someone in your marriage wants to leave, you will not be able to go, no, you have to stay, even though you don't want to be here. Apparently that's a really bad thing. The fact is that very, very few divorces are contested, so she's really making a big fuss about nothing, in my personal opinion. But what do you think? Please put your comments in the chat box. I'd love to hear what you think about this. She also added that making divorce easier and quicker will inevitably change the nature of the commitment that is made when marrying because those doing so will recognise that it is something that can be exited easily and quickly without having to prove that the relationship has broken down. Um, if any of you find divorce a simple, easy thing to do and, and you know, just by not having to blame each other, that alone is going to make it all just so easy to do, then again, please put your comments in because I haven't met that person yet personally. My favourite though, to round this off, sorry about my rant, but this guy's great. You've got, got a picture of him here. 
MP for Christchurch, Sir Christopher Chope. He compares the new divorce bill to how witches used to be treated. So according to Sir Christopher Chope, he said that the bill enables irretrievable breakdown of a marriage to be proved by mere assertion without the need for any evidence. Adding reliance on mere assertion was how we used to deal with witches and it's still a favourite tool of dictators such as Putin and Erdogan who govern by decree. I don't know what to say about that either. Let's move on to the next story. A slightly lighter one to finish on here. The Metro are telling us about Will Smith and he's uh, called his divorce from Cherie Zampino the worst thing in his adult life. Uh, the 51 year old has been married now to Jade Pinkett Smith since 1997 but two years before that he split from the mother of his son Trey after three years of marriage after meeting Jada. And Jada and Cherie butted heads together at the beginning of their co-parenting journey. Uh, apparently there were a few spats, but that's fair enough. Work. It's a difficult transition. And despite, though, a rocky start, Cherie, Jade and J Jada, sorry, and Will are all on great terms. And both Will and Jada, who have two children themselves, Jaden 21 and Willow 19, wished Zampino a happy birthday on Instagram. And Will Smith called his ex the best baby mama ever. That's a nice way to finish. I'm going to bring you in with now, sorry, we've got to, that's a little quick preview of our lovely Stella who's patiently waiting and we're now going to bring in Michael. We'll get bit Stella later, she's going to take us out of the show. Hello Michael. Hello Susie. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you're, um, I know everyone's important in Families New Fathers, but you're very, very active in that national charity, aren't you? You do lots of campaigning type things and talk to governments and, and uh, legislators. You've been up to something quite interesting this week, haven't you? Could you share that with us? Well, this week um, we had a meeting with the Department of Work and Pensions. Um, so these are the senior civil servants working on specifically on child maintenance on mostly on the policy side but we've touched also on operational issues um, in the current covid times so um, it was very good to be able to have a chance to kind of share with them our our members experience and our service users experience and to hear a little bit from them about what's going on at their end as well and what came out of it what, what are the kind of problems that have come up with the whole covid and lockdown well the the covid problems have created some really structural fundamental problems for the department because a lot of their staff have been redeployed to focus on universal credit and other support because we've got one, two, three million people now who are either unemployed or being furloughed. Um, and, and it means that they, did, they never expected to roll out universal credit quite as quickly as it's now having to be rolled out because all the new people becoming unemployed, they're no longer going on old benefit system, they're all going onto universal credit. So suddenly they're absolutely inundated with people applying for support and, their, and universal credit benefits um, and, and they've had to kind of redeploy a lot of the staff who've been working on child maintenance, um, which means that they've kind of had to take a lot of expedient decisions, some shortcuts about how they deal with child maintenance issues. And it's a problem for the receiving parents, it's a problem for the paying parents, it's it's a problem all around, of course, and of course it means that children are not getting what they were getting before people lost their jobs. Um, th there's a lot of difficulties which COVID has created um, for, for children, families, um, and, so, and for um... the department to manage. So you've got dads, presumably, that is that what you're saying, that dads are finding that they haven't got the pay packet anymore to pay what they were, and then the, and then the other parent, who's perhaps the main carer, is looking, has, suddenly hasn't got enough food, money to pay for the, the groceries, and, uh, and it's all a bit chaotic. And that's probably not helping the relationship between those co-parents much, no. I would say. No, and, and we, know, we hear these horrible cases where people who are perhaps not hearing each other, where the listening is kind of rather absent, who when the money stops, they sort of say, well, if you're not going to support, then you're not going to see the kids and all this sort of thing. And, and of course, you know, in the vast majority of cases, people are not not paying because 
um, they won't. In the vast majority of cases, they're unable to pay because they can't. And one of the things that sometimes missed, you know, we often when we hear stories in the news, the focus tends to be on kind of relatively high net worth problems where, where families with relatively large-ish incomes from at least one party are having difficulties come to an agreement about who's going to pay how much and when and so on. But, but actually, the vast majority of the cases that uh, the Department of Work and Pensions Child Maintenance Service are dealing with are people who are on somewhere around the minimum wage or unemployed and so on, who have developed arrears on their child maintenance, who are struggling to pay it. And, and there is an inadequate recognition that actually the lion's share of all the arrears and of all the new cases coming on stream now in, in the tens of thousands are actually people who simply don't have the money because they're unemployed, their work has been reduced. Uh, you know, for example, if, even if they're furloughed, it means that their income goes down by uh, 20%, they get 80% of their income in most cases, unless their employer is very generous and topped it up for them. And, and if that's the case, they won't review how much you have to pay until your income drops by 25% or more. So all those people on 80% furlough, they won't even review it. They won't even think about reviewing. They will continue to expect the same level of support to be paid. Now, that's all right if you're a 40, 50,000 plus pound a year earner. It's not so all right if you're somebody who's earning a thousand pounds a month. So, that, that's you crazy. know, it's creating so what, problems and tension and friction between the parents because um, one thinks that it's an entitlement. The other one is saying, I'm struggling. So that's that's ridiculous. So where, where were they listening to you? How do you get it across to bureaucrats, I guess, is, is that's what they are. They've got their job to do. How do you get them to listen and understand the sort of pain of ordinary people having to deal with these situations? Well, just occasionally, we've got to get kind of a little bit passionate with them and actually help them to understand because um, it can be quite difficult. You know, they've got a big machine that they're running and they're trying to keep it as simple as possible. Um, whereas the nuances of different families' needs are, are much more complex. Um, I mean, I, I, I had the sense that they're certainly hearing about the problems of people on furlough, the 20%, 25% issue. Um, they're not going to tell us in a meeting that we're having between Families Need Fathers and the Department of Work and Pensions. They're not going to use that to announce policy changes. But my sense was that they were listening to what was being said, that they're probably hearing the large number of people saying what a difficult problem it is. If they have 20% reduction of income, they've still got to pay their own mortgages or rent or whatever it is. Um, and their child maintenance um, remains un unaltered. Uh, and I'm sure they must recognise, you know, they've heard it from us, and I'm sure their own figures are telling them this, that, that based on their historic experience, that if people don't have the money, they won't pay it, and the arrears will simply accumulate, and they'll have the sort of problem under the child maintenance system that they had under the discredited uh, child support agency, which they had to close down because it was so inadequate and failing. It's so a, it's a difficult from... issue and they've got a lot that they're dealing with and this is putting more pressure. But in a way, they need to be seeing this as an opportunity to relook at the whole thing. Uh, but they're looking at it in the context of what they can do short term without legislation, because so much of what is in child maintenance is actually enshrined in the law which means that if you want to make a tweak to much of the policy, you actually have to pass new legislation, which, as we know, is really difficult. You've just talked about how yeah. um, in, 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 in the No Fault Divorce Bill, how, how long it's taken to get that through Parliament and to get everything to start happening. And it's the so, same kind of problem. So, Michael, you've got, apart from helping governments to hear and, and let the real problems that dads or and not just dads sometimes the mothers as well it can work both ways you also are on the ground families need fathers as a charity they're individual groups aren't they could you tell us just a little bit about those groups yes we have um, something over 30 support groups in England and um, and and they normally when we're not under COVID-19 lockdown they meet some of them meet once a month some of them twice there's a couple of groups that meet twice a week so we have local support groups, they're all run by volunteers, and those volunteers uh, meet in sometimes in very nice venues, sometimes in the back of a pub in a room, um, where, where 
groups of dads and some mums and some grandparents come and and face to face try to get some support when they are in the process of difficult separation issues um, find out what they should do what they shouldn't do get some emotional support find out from others who have gone before them um, a little bit about some of the do's and don'ts and and, and often just realize that they're not alone in the difficulties that they're facing Um, you know we, we are now in a situation where the vast majority of people who are separating, who can't come to an agreement, end up get, and, and do have to go to court, um, are without representation. The legal aid that's available is very limited indeed, which means that the vast majority of people on, e- on even the lowest incomes on, don't get any legal aid support. So they're on their own. And, and if you imagine, if you've never been to court before, how difficult that can be working out what to apply for, how to apply, how to behave when you get there, what should you be doing? Um, and it's a problem for everybody on both sides. So, 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 um, so you give they're them coming a to us in these support them. groups up and down the country to get some guidance um, about some of those do's and don'ts and, and hopefully to try and avoid escalating the conflict and seeing if they can keep the temperatures down. And Michael, you also, earn, as you were saying, you help support those many who are self-representing. Often it's because they're not getting access to their child or children. And uh, that can be a long and arduous and soul-destroying process. So people can get help on the website. There's a QR code there. Uh, you probably can't see it, but everyone else can. And that will take them to your, your site. The membership, just tell them a little bit about the membership. I mean, people can subscribe for free for newsletters. But uh, like me, they should become a paid member because it's cheap as chips. Um, and what do they get for their membership? Well, if, if they remember, they will, as well as getting a regular newsletter, and we typically send one or two, occasionally slightly more per month, uh, with whatever interesting news and, and support information that we can get our hands on and that we put together. Uh, but they will also be able to then use our online forum. The online forum, you can log in um, and, and under a user ID that doesn't have to show your real name. Um, and it enables you to ask others on the forum questions. And there's also a solicitor section there where you can ask specific, I mean, this isn't about kind of dealing with your whole case for you, but if you've got specific legal questions that you want support with, you can pop them into the solicitor section of the online forum. And within hopefully a day or two, sometimes within an hour or two, somebody will respond and give you some an answer as to what your best course of action is or tell you what the situation is. So that's one of the things that you get. You get access to fact sheets, other information, um, that kind of thing so so um we, we hope that gives some value to people when they need that kind of basic support um just to and set it- them on the right path because quite often the things that cause conflict is where you get things wrong at the beginning of the process couldn't agree more and um, just to accentuate i remember i went to one of your um, agms and uh, some very powerful stories were being shared and it wasn't just dads there's mothers as well who are denied access to their children and uh, yes it was a very uh, an unforgettable experience actually going to that and it's incredible the work that the charity does uh, so thank you very very much and i'd love to get you back on for there's so many other things that we could talk about um so thank you michael and um enjoy the show and i'll see you as soon i hope bye for now thank you bye-bye so Join Families New Fathers is an amazing charity. It's something that's like £35 or something a year. It's nothing and you are supporting uh, so many families by doing that. Um, We are now moving to the learning part of this and there's a, uh, towards the end of this, there's some statistics which um, I I was so excited when I found these and you'll you'll be able to tell. Here we are. Uh, I'm carrying on from uh, Sticky Tape and Scissors, which we had last week, because there was so much to say. And in part two, I want to to talk about how if the divorcing person says to you, and I'm sure many of us in this field have heard this, but my day in court, I want my day in court. That's my chance to feel heard. Right, you can tell them that the judge is not interested in their pain. But if you're a celebrity, the local press may well be, and they are allowed to come into the courtroom and report on whatever dirty laundry is paraded before the judge. 
If you choose mediation or collaborative law, no journalists are allowed in. It is completely confidential. And that is also where you're going to feel heard. Because in mediation and collaborative law, your ex has the opportunity to really listen to you in a supportive environment as part of the process of seeking a sustainable settlement and a way to start over as separate people. And you have the opportunity to really listen to them too. That doesn't happen really in the court process. As co-parents, this is a really good way to begin the many years of co-parenting that lie ahead. If you're really clever, you'll do some work singly or together with a relationship coach as well, which can tr transform the way you negotiate the divorce journey and make staying out of the adversarial frame of mind much easier. Now, according to uh, Nicholas Wall, who's a former president of the Family Division of the English High Court, he said that people think that post-separation parenting is easy. In fact, it is exceedingly difficult. And as a rule of thumb, his experience is that the more intelligent the parent, the more intractable the dispute. He said there's nothing worse for most children than for their parents to denigrate each other. Parents simply do not realise the damage that they do to their children by the battles they wage over them. Separation, oh sorry, separating parents rarely behave reasonably, although they always believe that they are doing so and that the other party is behaving unreasonably. I think we've all met those parents. A research report on the impact of family breakdown, this is the one that I was very excited about when I found this, a research report on the impact of family breakdown found that the long-term effects in adults who as children have experienced family breakdown include problems with mental health and well-being, alcohol use, lower educational attainment and problems with relationships. Now, the good bit is, the good news, is that by guiding yourselves and your friends and colleagues away from a divorce process that damages those kids, you will be helping that family to be a healthy and happy one in the longer term. Because parental conflict is a key variable associated with negative outcomes in children from both intact and non-intact families. Research in this area clearly shows that family functioning has a greater impact on outcomes and family structure. This is the bit I really like. So high levels of conflict stress resulting from the separation and or resulting poverty can all negatively affect maternal mental health. Poor mental health affects the ability of parents, whether married, separated or divorced, to parent effectively, which in turn impacts on children's well-being. Obviously, this isn't the bit I really like, it's what we're coming to. While family transitions place children at an increased risk of negative outcomes, the evidence shows that relatively few children and adolescents experience enduring problems. And some children can actually benefit when it brings, when it comes to an end of a harmful family situation. For example, where there's high levels of parental conflicts, including violence. So what distinguishes family breakdown is that their parents are likely to be distressed at the same time. In fact, it is likely that parents distress that the that the parents distress may be a direct causal factor in the children's distress. The parents' own distress may mean that they are unable to support and nurture their children adequately through the acute phase of family breakdown, and children may be unable or unwilling to communicate their needs or distress to their caring parent in order to protect them from further distress. So here we get to it. Listen to this. The research report, Impact of Family Breakdown on Children's Wellbeing, concluded, children from intact families can experience circumstances known to increase the risk of poor outcomes, such as poverty, parental conflict, violence, and poor parenting, whilst children whose parents separate may not experience these or can cope well with the result that many children experiencing family breakdown will function as well as or even better than children from intact families. That's quite profound because it's not what we're fed 
the idea that your family's broken, it's all over, your poor children are going to be destroyed. Of course it's not true. It's the way the parents work together. If you can co-parent in a healthy way, as I always say to people, it doesn't matter whether mummy and daddy live in the same house or different houses. It's the fact that you work together to make, um, make sure your children feel loved and that they want you just to be happy at the end of the day. So that was a great research report and um, I'm going to pull that out and pop that in the Facebook group later. A key thing that you really can do to make sure that more children do not suffer long term ill effects from their parents divorce or from your divorce is not to tolerate anyone speaking ill of their ex when their children are in hearing distance. And remember, children have much better hearing than we do. I'll finish with this uh, US TV star Valerie Bertinelli says, she says it all. Her quote is, divorce isn't the child's fault. Don't say anything unkind about your ex to the child because really you're just hurting the child. Now we're going to move into shared stories and this is another example of a uh, a chap I was talking to, he shared his story and he very kindly let me record it. I just realised that every time I spoke to her that I would uh, have reactions. And I, I, the, the, pho the phone would ring and I would just tense up <laughs> so I'd see her name on the phone. And I realised that I had um, like a pre-set way of being mm. when we were in, interacting and uh, that somehow unconsciously that I was already judging that the conversation was going to be difficult or intense or that she was going to attack me somehow and I would have to defend myself. So um, I just kind of decided to, to drop that story within myself and just be aware that I was um, going to be defensive and so I, I said to myself right rather than feel that way I need to start opening up and before when I see the phone go or I, I hear that ring tone that's hers that I actually start to relax and think more uh, compassionately about her and actually see some positive qualities and be grateful that she is the mother of my child and she loves him and she wants the best for him and rather than interpreting some of the things that she's saying from that old place is actually just really listen and hear it as what is actually being said is what's being said I, this is what it is uh, not attaching anything to it yeah not 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 judging it and not interpreting it as a some form of attack on me so if she says um oh, can you be on time this week? Not then interpreting that as in, oh, she thinks I'm late all the time and she's judging me. Just say, I can just, I just say yeah, I can be, you know. And I just found that our relationship has softened and um, we're more able to move through our communications more easily. And, uh, yeah, we're getting things done, finally. You know? and, that, that, and, it, and my life is less stressful. And I feel more at ease in myself and when the phone goes, the phone goes, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Thank you so much, Jay, for that lovely interview, a very evolved daddy. Um, we're now going to have a quick round up and then I'm going to bring you to Stella, who is amazing. So uh, we're just going to quickly get your phones out. Go on, get, you've got your QR codes coming up here. <coughs> So the Divorce Financial Workshop, I ran one last night. It was fabulous. We had 20 attendees. They all had got a huge amount out of it. And um, it was so much fun. I'm going to run another one as soon as I can. So uh, this will take you to the waiting list, but hopefully you won't have to wait too long. Um, so yeah, that's the financial Divorce Financial Workshops where we can really spend some time with you. And we had collaborative lawyer, a mediator, um, a traditional family lawyer, we had financial planner, we had a healer, we had oh everything you can possibly imagine all crammed into uh, less than two hours. We did really well with it. 
Now I know most of you should be in the uh, divorce uh, uh, best way to divorce Facebook group by now, but if you haven't, you can get this. If you can't can't manage to get it as we whiz through now, don't worry, you'll be able to get it on the replay. Now the secret divorce group is 30 days free and after that it's cheap as chips. Now the reason to join this is you get to see recordings of uh, workshops. We do a monthly meetup where we get together and catch up with everyone, we're often inviting uh, coaches, financial experts, lawyers to those chats. And, um, and it's just a really nice uh, community. It's much, much smaller than the Facebook one. It's not on Facebook. It is much more, more private. And if you want to quickly ask me a question, that's where you put it in and I'll be able to see it and answer it. So please join the Secret Divorce Group. It's a lovely community and you'll be made very welcome. And now get yourself comfortable and ready. We're gonna have a, a wonderful healing experience. I'm gonna introduce you now to Stella and she'll start by giving you a little bit about herself because she's quite a, an amazing story and then she'll get into the healing. So we'll just introduce her with the healing slide. Welcome Stella. Oh, pop your microphone on. <laughs> yes, welcome. It's great to be with you. And I really sincerely hope that that the sequence that we will do tonight together is going to release some of that negative energy that sits in the stomach. You know, it's I feel very much, you know, divorce is so much suffering. And I pray that after we've done these techniques, that some of you will feel ready to be reborn, to embrace yourself again in new light. Um, my story is that I actually began my career working for the Rolling Stones in my early 20s. But before that, I had a very profound experience. I actually died in a horrific car accident when I was nearly 17. Uh, I remember my bloody body. I remember people being around me and saying she's dead. And I remember saying, God, I, I'm much too young to die. There's so much I want to do. And don't ask me how, how, but I got back into my body. And after that, you know, my life has been really quite spiritual, from Buddhist to theosophist. And I'm trained in three schools of yoga. I'm a health and beauty expert. And tonight, what we're going to do is a technique to release that negative energy. And then we're going to do a meditation, a deep one for self-love. So if I may, I would like to explain it to you first so that when you close your eyes, you feel comfortable and easy doing it, yes? Okay, so it begins this sequence by bringing the hand to the belly button. And then you're going to draw the hands out as though you're drawing out a long rope, okay? So that's going to be the first part. I will guide you through it all. Now, a good tip, if you feel you're in this negative space, then a great essential oil that you can use for this is basil oil. And you would just put a few drops on clean hands before you begin. And also, I would suggest that when you go to court or anything like that, you know, put a little bit on and, you know, just to make yourself feel that bit more positive. So the first part is that, as we remember. Then you're going to just rub your hands together. You're going to listen to my voice. You're going to bring your hands to your heart and gently rock backwards and forwards as you listen to my voice. And then you're going to bring your hands high above your head. And you are going to feel yourself collecting the light from your feet to your head Again, I will explain it. Then you're going to create around you a protective bubble of light, tap your fingers on the floor, and we will end with an affirmation. It's very important in this time that you do feed yourself self-love, because I can almost feel some of your suffering from here. So shall we begin slowly? I ask you, to please just close your eyes, just trust me and trust you as my eyes will be closed at the same time. 
So first of all, you're bringing your hands to your belly button, as we said, and the motion with the fingers, the hands, is as, as if you're drawing out a long rope. Now, if you could continue to do that as you listen to the sound of my voice, I would like you to breathe. So you're breathing in for three. You're breathing out for three. If you could keep that up as you listen to the sound of my voice, I would like you to imagine that inside of you, through all this pain and suffering you've been through, that you've gathered this big black cloud that's sitting in your stomach like a brick. And I want you, as you breathe and keep pulling out, to feel that all of that black energy, you're drawing it up from your feet to your stomach and then down from your head to your stomach. And as you breathe now, every time, you are going to feel that black turn into a dark gray and then a slightly lighter gray. And what I would like you to do is to imagine that person who's caused you so much pain and you can see them there in the distance opposite you. And you're now saying, I release myself from all of this negative energy that has been caused by the way we've dealt with everything. And I no longer want to be the bearer of this. So I'm releasing myself from it. And as you breathe, if you feel tears coming, that's okay. Open your heart and just keep pulling out until you feel that black cloud has moved further and further away from you where it can't touch you anymore. Now bring your hands to your heart and just gently rock your body back and forth. Start where you should have started years ago with you. Learn to love yourself so deeply that no one will ever be able to cut you that deeply again. In your new life, you can be whatever and whoever you choose. Don't waste time. Nurture and love yourself until the black clouds hanging over you become a beautiful rainbow of colors which reflect the person you now choose to become. Feel the love for yourself that you've denied. So much pain has blocked your heart. Feel your heart unblocking and feel self-love come back to you as you bring your hands high above your head like the steeple of a church. And now draw up from your feet all the way up as you breathe breathe it up it's very important to breathe when you're blocked breathe up this light and this healing energy into your fingertips and then create around you a bubble of light i bet you can see the light and feel the light as you do this let your fingers tap the floor that's symbolic of bringing the physical and the spiritual body into balance. And now, if you would, just say this affirmation with me. I love and take care of myself every day and let go of all reasons not to do so in my new, happy, rewarding life. Decide with me now that your divorce isn't a death. See it as a rebirth of the person you could have become 
when you were in a loveless marriage that maybe went on too long, see today as your reaper. As I finish this healing by sending you blessings, now open your eyes with me. Bring your hands here in yoga. When we finish an asana, this is called an asana, we use the word namaste. Namaste means I salute the light in you, and I certainly salute the light in you and wish you a fast recovery from your pain. Namaste. And hope to see you again soon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Stella. Namaste. That was very, very beautiful. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to get you on at a later date because you, your amazing story and you have um, some incredible things to tell us about staying young and beautiful, which I definitely I like to hear. I certainly do. And then I will also be uh, giving away some of my books, Central Sorcery, which are all natural health and beauty recipes and well-being suggestions so that applicable for men and women, you know, so that in this rebirth, the most important thing is for us to nurture, love, take care of ourselves. So I'd like so, to ask you, Stella, if you, can, um, if you can make sure that when I when this goes live, I will tag you in, and then if you can put some links to those, that will be great, that people can find them. Thank you so I much. Uh, Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Ooh. Ooh.